Welcome to the Whaley Historic House Museum. The Whaley Historic House Museum tells the story of migration, industry, and urbanization in Flint, a town which was established on Flint River in 1819 and quickly became an important link in Michigan's lumber industry. Today, we are delighted to be able to share with you the story of the McFarland Whaley family who lived in this house from 1885 to 1925. Join us in learning about the lasting impact that the McFarlane and Whaley families had on the Flint community and how they inspired the creation of this museum and shaped our institutional themes of family, philanthropy, and preservation. Who were the Whaley and McFarlane families? Mary McFarlane Whaley, born in 1847 in Caledonia, New York, was the daughter of Alexander McFarlane and Margaret Ann Simpson McFarlane, two early and influential migrants to Flint. Robert Whaley, known as RJ, was born in Castile, New York in 1840. His mother died when he was eight years old. Though he initially moved with his father to Wisconsin, he eventually returned to help his grandmother run the family farms and tavern. He became acquainted with Mary McFarlane, who was visiting her mother's relatives nearby. Robert and Mary were married on January 24, 1867. Together, they moved to Flint later that year. They had a son, Donald Whaley, who was born in 1869. Unfortunately, he died shortly before his 11th birthday in 1880 of diphtheria, following a trip to Detroit with his mother. Florence Whaley Oral was born Florence Bickford in 1874. The Whaleys assumed legal guardianship of Florence when she was a very small child, following the death of her father. Though no formal adoption papers have ever been found, Florence used the Whaley name and referred to the Whaley's as her mother and father. At the age of 10, Florence and her adoptive parents moved into their new home on Kersley Street. Following her graduation from school in Wisconsin, she returned to Flint and lived in this house until her marriage to William Crapo Oral in 1895. Robert Whaley Oral, born in 1898, was an only child and was the last descendant of Robert Whaley and Mary McFarlane Whaley. He went on to become a captain in the United States Naval Reserve. Robert assisted with the restoration of the Whaley Historic House Museum through his correspondence with early members of the Whaley Historical House Association. His letters were often covered in his drawings, showing how the rooms were used and configured and how items were placed throughout the house. In addition, he donated a number of family heirlooms, which are still housed within the museum today. What the Whaley and McFarland families left behind. After arriving in Flint in 1867, Robert's first employment was as a bookkeeper and head clerk at his father-in-law's lumber mill, but he was soon entrusted to manage Alexander McFarland's diverse business interests in lumber, real estate, and banking. In the 1870s, he started working at Citizens Bank and soon after became a member of the board of directors. Following Alexander McFarland's death in 1881, Robert became president of Citizens Bank, a position he held until his own passing 41 years later in 1922, making him the longest serving president of Citizens Bank. In September 1886, during his tenure as president of Citizens Bank, Robert Whaley granted an initial loan of $2,000 to William Crapo Durant and Josiah Dallas Dort to create the Flint Road Cart Company. In Durant's mind, the loan was so significant that more than half a century later he wrote, 
Robert J. Whaley, by reason of his courage and his confidence, is entitled to all the credit for having made possible the creation of a nationwide institution, which resulted later in the establishment of 12 industrial institutions in Flint, besides making it the birthplace of the largest creation of its kind in the world, the General Motors Corporation. Mary was an active member of the Flint community. With her mother, aunts, and sisters, she belonged to the Ladies' Library Association, which eventually became the Flint Public Library. Additionally, they were active in Art Class, a pioneering women's organization that promoted the education of women in arts, literature, and history. In 1922, Robert Whaley died at the age of 82. His obituary in the Flint Journal stated his philosophy. Every good citizen should be willing to give some time to public affairs. Following a stroke, Mary McFarlane Whaley passed in 1925 at the age of 78. They are buried together in Glenwood Cemetery. Both of their wills are magnificent testimonials to their dedication to family and community. Nieces, nephews, cousins, close friends, and dedicated servants were all remembered. They left money to charitable organizations such as the Salvation Army, YWCA, King's Daughters, and the Child Welfare Society. Kersley Street Methodist, Christ Episcopal, St. Andrew's Episcopal, Mount Olive Baptist, and African Methodist Episcopal were also beneficiaries. But perhaps the most lasting bequests from the Whaley's are the institutions that they helped create, which can still be found in Flint today. In 1922, following the death of her late husband, Mary donated 72 acres of her family land to the city of Flint in his memory and $5,000 to develop the land into a park. This has become Whaley Park on Franklin Avenue. In 1923, Robert and Mary provided funds to create an endowment and set aside land for the Whaley Children's Center in memory of their son Donald. The mission of this organization was to provide care for homeless and neglected children. Mary specified in her will that upon her death, a trust would be created for the purposes of providing and maintaining a home for elderly ladies. Upon her death in 1925, an endowment was created and the house and property were donated for use by the McFarlane Home, named for her parents. The McFarlane Home used the house until the 1970s, at which time the construction of the I-475 Expressway forced their relocation and they built a new facility on another part of the property. The McFarlane Home continues to provide accessible housing for older women to this day. Our Historic House Museum The McFarlane Home donated the house to the Whaley Historical House Association to remember and recognize the contribution of the McFarlane Whaley families to Flint. Since then, the house has functioned as a historic house museum and is open for tours and events to promote history, education, and culture in the community. Listed as a Michigan State Historic Site since 1977, the Whaley Historic House Museum was added to the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. Of course, the Whaley family lived in this home from 1885 until 1925. During these 40 years, the interior of the house was updated to accommodate changing tastes and trends, additional family members, and even new technologies. Through archival research and correspondence, we have strived to maintain the authenticity of the Whaley's home. Aside from the many years it took to restore the house to represent the era in which the family lived in it to become a museum, several different restoration campaigns have now become a part of this house's history. Our most recent restoration campaign resulted from a tragic event. 
While restoring the roof, the Whaley Historic House Museum experienced a devastating fire in 2015. As a result, from 2016 until 2018, we were closed to the public for a large-scale renovation project. However, we were able to update these features and create a truly unique and revitalized space that is still authentic to the period and perfect for special events and museum rentals. We hope that you enjoyed this glimpse into the history of Flint and the lives of the McFarlane and Whaley families. Come visit this unique historic house museum, which has been lovingly restored to give our visitors a sense of how the family would have lived from 1885 to 1925. When you come to take a tour of the museum, you'll see beautiful architectural features and unique highlights from our collections. We hope to see you here soon at the Whaley Historic House Museum.